the grant? We should start there. Yeah. All right. So the Tilly Edinger Travel Grant is something that Time Scavengers team developed because we were pretty sick of, you know, there being barriers for students and a vocational scientist to attend conferences. So it's kind of a big deal. Um, this lack of funding for students and avocational scientists, there's nothing really out there right now for the latter group. There are lots of travel grants for students right now. So we came up with travel grant. It's a little different from other travel grants and here's how. So most travel grants require that you have to present an abstract at the conference you're going to, but we don't require that. The student can just go to the conference just to go and that's totally fine. The second way is it differs is that we pay for the abstract fees and conference registration costs up front. So there's no reimbursement structure here, which is so prohibitive to students, um, especially ones that don't have like strong financial support. Um, a lot of grad students don't get paid a ton of money. So, you know, this is a big financial burden to have to put hundreds of dollars on our credit card. So we pay that up front for the students. And the third way that this travel grant is different is that we prioritize students from historically excluded identities in STEM, or that have excluded historically excluded identities in STEM. Um, so we're really trying to lower barriers for folks that have traditionally not been able to get into conference spaces. Now, this is important because conferences are where we do a lot of our networking, is where we learn a lot about what people are doing on the cutting edge of science. Um, so that's how we developed this travel, or that's why we developed the travel grant. So as far as eligibility, anybody that's a student can apply. Um, we ask that you just work in the general areas of evolution or climate science that aligns with our time scavengers kind of uh, philosophy and mission and vision. Uh, we can also, uh, we also accommodate a vocational um, scientists. So those that may not be professional paleontologists or climate change scientists in the traditional sense, but folks that do a lot of collecting preparatory work that work with curators and these other scientists that go out in the field and do you know a lot of the work behind the scenes that is really actually critical to moving the field forward um, so to apply we ask that you oh actually i looked at the form in a long time but we have this form online that you can just fill out it's pretty quick and simple um we don't ask for a letter of recommendation right john uh no we do not yeah so it's pretty straightforward. So just fill it out online, you send it to us. And then the requirements are if you get funding, we'll let you know pretty soon. We have a committee that works together quickly after the deadline The students have, yeah, there's the form. Jen just pulled it up. So the requirements and everything like that, it's it looks like a lot, but it's really probably could take you an hour or two to fill out as a student or anybody yeah, who's a I think like these this is all that they need to actually fill out is this final page it's just with an example so there's only like 11 questions or something yeah and most are quick yeah your name <laughs> exactly minimal writing so if you get the grant we'll let you know we'll schedule a time for you that we either log into your say you're going to gsa We'll log into your account using your information and we'll just pay for your registration and abstract fees once your information is in or we'll zoom with the student or the winner of the grant um, and we will pay for that abstract fee and conference costs while you when you're you know on the zoom with us so if you win the grant we also ask the awardees to write a meet the scientist post for time scavengers and that post will be tagged with the awardees name that's something that they can put on CVs, resumes, uh, use for job applications and stuff like that, that they've done education outreach before. Um, we also ask that they write a blog post that's going to go on our education and outreach blog series, um, just detailing what they learned from the conference and their conference experience. So the students, or the, sorry, I should stop saying that because it's not just students who get this grant, uh, but the awardees really, you get the money up front, no reimbursement, and you know, you write these two blog posts and those are considered science communication experiences and contributing to a science communication initiative. So that's that's pretty much the overview of the grant itself. Um, so we named it Tilly Edinger Travel Grant after Tilly Edinger. Jen, did you want to talk a little bit about Tilly and bring up her page? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I thought... 
that would bring up her. Let's see. Here we go. Um, yeah, so Tilly is uh, kind of credited with founding the field of paleoneurology or the study of fossil brains. So consider um, like uh, endocast, so like the space your brain takes up leaves uh, like a specific shape and size in whatever remains uh, there may be. So you can take a cast of that space and study what um, an ancient animal's brain might have looked like. Um, and uh, Tilly's kind of background spoke to us as uh, she had dealt with many kind of obstacles, um, including anti-Semitism, sexism, workplace issues, and um, she's disabled. Um, so we have a page that kind of details out uh, her life um, and where she worked and just some information on where to get to get more details uh, about her. But we wanted to, to pick someone who kind of was successful in the, the face of adversity and maybe other people can can relate to her uh, compared to different people can relate to her compared to some of the other kind of society and other grants that are generally uh, white men. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else is on here. So yeah, before, just... oh, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. I was just going to say, like, when we were getting ready to get the grant up and running, we sent out a survey to people um, trying to figure out the impact of attending conferences, because this seems to be like, um, we wanted to make sure it was clear that there's a need for grants like this and that the need provides an impact on the individual's career or other kind of goals. Um, so we have this uh, page, which I think is linked, like you can get to it from the Tilly page, but also through the our top menu bar. Um, so it just has like some basic statistics from the survey that, that we ran um, asking like when you attended your first conference, um, did you have money or was a lack of money preventative in attending the conference? Um, so it's, it's split pretty evenly. And then there are some quotes um, that you could read through regarding like if you were reimbursed and how that impacted you, if there were enough funding opportunities for you, um, and then like what what the output was of attending your first conference, like did did it expand your network? Um, and it seems like overwhelmingly 65% said yes, this was important for kind of getting their careers off the ground. Um, anything else specific we should talk about with this? Yeah, we could like dive into some of the results. Yeah, I think it's really astounding. Like, I don't know if you mentioned this, for your first scientific conference, did you pay all or part of the conference fees out of pocket? So there was like a quarter of people pretty much responded, like they paid all of it by themselves. And like, you know, I think it's important to highlight this because conferences should be considered part of your job. We're not going there. We do have fun, but we're working when we're there. We're making connections that strengthen collaborations that lead to grant opportunities, papers, stuff like that, which are all requirements of being an academic and not everyone who goes as an academic. But, you know, especially for folks in that field, I think it's really important and imperative to highlight, like, if you were working in a, you know, bank, right, and they were going to send you somewhere, they wouldn't, they would pay for your trip. In any other discipline, your trip would get paid for. Um, so in academia, it's always not like that. A lot of our conferences are self-funded, and a lot of folks who responded to this, a quarter of them indicated that they indeed did self-fund their trips, and this is for work. Um, so I think we need to, as a group, especially academics, recognize that this isn't acceptable. And that's part of why we did this travel grant, was to help offset those costs, again, especially for folks that are historically like excluded from these conference spaces due to like financial barriers, mainly financial barriers. Um, they're just cost prohibitive. Yeah. Was there anything else from that that really stuck out to you, Jen, when we did the survey? Did 
So you're being like put you on the spot. Yeah, it's always no, just the no. that sticks out to me. That's fine. Yeah, I had also muted myself while you were speaking. Um, so I think this, uh, do you feel that there are ample funding opportunities for students to get money to go to conferences? Um, like overwhelmingly, no. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is still pretty evident because I, I remember applying for all sorts of travel grants and yeah. like the department would give you some amount of money as a student uh, but they couldn't pay for some things and certain grants could only pay for certain things. And for others, you had to be a member of the organization for like so many months or something before you could apply. And uh, the funding that's offered by a lot of conferences isn't very much. It's like a hundred bucks or so. And then that's after, after you attend, like you get the money there. Mm hmm yeah, it's pretty abysmal, to be honest, the way that we treat conferences. Yeah, and over 60% of respondents also indicated that being reimbursed, like, negatively affected them financially. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, when you're only making, what, 20000 or less a year, which I guess maybe is things are a bit better depending on what school you're at, like, you have to just put it on your credit card, right? Like, there's no other option. Yep. Even now, like, so I'm like in this first semester as an assistant professor and even having to put stuff on my credit card now, even though I make like adult like money, it's still so prohibitive because even from like, I have credit card charges from the past that I'm still trying to catch up with. And there's still like reimbursement structures within the university system where I am. And it's pretty true for everywhere. Like, you know, I went on this trip to Texas in December and that was like a huge cost. It was like over $3,000. I mean, I got reimbursed for it, but it took like a month. And with interest rates the way they are, that's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, it's just, we don't think of enough about this stuff. It always gets me fired up to talk about this stuff too. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's silly, right? Because it's expected of you. And if you, if you don't do it, you're at a detriment to your peers because you haven't spent the time making those connections or practicing presentations or, you know, networking in, mm -hmm. in that kind of sphere. But if you don't have the means to get there, like, what are you supposed to do? It's just not right. clear. Like even you just now, can't participate. Okay. <laughs> it just seems yeah. silly. It is. And like, even now, like, if you're going to grad school, even as an undergrad, a lot of the committees, the graduate student committees within these universities are looking at the resumes and CVs of these students applying. And that's one of the things that's come up is, oh, do they have experience presenting going to conferences? And, you know, again, it is something that can be prohibitive to advancing your career if you don't have the money. So it's, yeah, the financial burden and expectations of conferences is absolutely like just a total blockage for someone trying to further their career sometimes. It's so annoying. Yeah. And like, even we as like adults and professionals, we max out our room capacity, right? So like <laughs> we, and it's just like one of those things where it's like, oh, you're going, I'm going to book the room. And then there's four, sometimes five people in the room because it just makes sense because it's cheaper. But say you didn't have the lab group support like we've had, like our like little group has expanded. But like what would have like our friend Jeanette didn't have her hotel fell through with that one night. And we were like, OK, yeah, just come stay with us. Um, but if. Sorry. Like, we didn't have the connection to Jeanette. Like, what, she just wouldn't have a hotel room. Like, it's it's yeah. tricky because, like, we strengthen these relationships by attending these events together. But if you can't participate, then you just get pushed further and further behind. Mm -hmm. It's so true. There's actually a conference coming up this summer. It's our big forums conference. We have it, like, every four years. So the last time I went, I was a PhD student. It was great. But now as an assistant professor, I still can't afford to go. I don't have the startup funds to use because it's, you know, already allocated towards equipment and I've had some unexpected expenses, which is fine. Fine with that. And it's angering because, you know, 
they have reduced rates for folks that are retired. And I think that's fine and well, but there's also a reduced student rate, but it's also like, okay, what about early career folks? You know, we need to also think about the folks that are in the middle, strengthening those ties too. So a lot of times the people that are in charge of conferences, and certainly this isn't the only conference that's done this, a lot of the times they're not fully thinking about the student postdoc and, you know, pre-tenure assistant professors of people that are really trying out there, out there trying to get money. And that's the other thing, right? Like we kind of touched on, like grants are hard to get. It takes a lot of time to write them. They're not always guaranteed. Um, so yeah, that goes back to the point, like of our respondents during the survey, like there really aren't enough opportunities out there to get these travel grants. Um, and they're really needed. So yeah, it, it's pretty wild. Yeah. And it's almost like when you're on committees and stuff, whether it's for like the 4Ms group or like I'm on a uh, Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections committee, but like there are committee meetings at the conferences, but how are you able to <laughs> attend if, if you can't get money to go to wherever it is? And yeah, it's, it's, really hard like there are some travel grants but then like you said they're like limited it's either like for retirees students or early career professionals and I'm like at the edge because it's I'm five years post PhD so like what what is the early career and how how do we how do we define that given the like circumstances like a lot of retirees are way better off financially than we will probably ever be yeah that's so true <laughs> Yeah, our generation's going to have a hard time, I think. Hopefully not, but we'll see. We'll see. It's just bonkers. But yeah. yeah, why don't we show some data? We've got some data also, getting back on track to Tilly, about like folks that have gotten the travel grant in the past. Mm -hmm. Where is that on the... What would be the best window to show for that? Yeah, I was just thinking, maybe we don't have that on the website, do we? I don't think so. I think it's, no, I can right. pull up Canva. No, sorry. I was thinking about VIP. I think that's what I was considering because we have data for that. We, you made that page. Yeah. So uh, we can kind of like anecdotally go through it. We have yeah. like, this is, we've done a couple of iterations. So it started in 2021 um, with two, two cycles, right? So, um, maybe you want to pull up the canvas so you can read the numbers instead of me like botching. Them. Yeah, I was trying to see if we had like, oh, I hadn't linked a poster because that's what I'd really like to show. Wait, I can pull it up. Let me pull up our poster that we presented at GSA because that's got some data on it too. Here, well, I can, I can do it on here. Let me, because then I can share it. Oh, good thought, good thought. Um, which poster are you thinking? The one that we did at GSA in the fall, so GSA 2022. Okay. I think I had, like we had a whole quarter of the poster dedicated to Tilly. Yeah, here we go. Let me zoom in. Oops, sorry, I'm new to this screen share life. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good. Definitely. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure this out. I probably should have downloaded it, but that would have been It's okay, take your time, it's all good. Okay. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so this is a poster we presented at the Geological Society of America in, gosh, where was that held? It was in Denver in October. Yeah. Yes. This past October. Yeah. So the pie chart on the left side shows the countries from which people are from. So about a little over half of our awardees have come from the U.S. We have some from Germany. Um, what was it? Italy? I can't see. I'm looking at it on the live stream, but. Oh, um. India, Spain, Philippines, Canada, and France. Uh, and I think these are the 
not their countries of origin, but their countries where they're attending university. Yep. Yep. And I think we've done 17. We've funded 17 students so far. So we haven't supported any avocational scientists to date, but we really would like to. Um, so we've got those 17 students from 16 universities in these different countries. And what's cool is that we've supported them to go to a range of conferences. So we have the American Geophysical Union. Um, they've gone to those AGU meetings, Geological Society of America, um, the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, the U European Geophysical Union. Um, there's one about like human evolution we've supported. And there was something else that was a little specialized. Was it like, not isotopes. Lipids in so, the oceans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a biochemical type stuff, which is really cool. So I don't know. I've been really impressed with the applicants and who we've so far given money to. We really are supporting folks from all over the world um, to go to these conferences. And again, these are students that are working within the realms of evolutionary theory, climate change, and that can be, you know, deep time, paleontological data to inform us how critters are going to evolve and continue evolving under a warming earth and how they respond and applying that to today. Um, so it's just really a broad swath of these young researchers or early stage researchers that we're sending to these conferences, which is really cool. I don't yeah, know. I'm really proud of this travel grant. I am too. I think another kind of difference that we haven't mentioned is a lot of travel grants are uh, static in that you re can be awarded like $300 or $50 or everybody in your like geographic region gets like the same amount depending on how many people applied. It's just like dividing the pot. Um, this grant is not like that. So it is based essentially on the amount of funding we have and the need request or the ask request. So, you know, no two conferences have the same registration requirements. So Maybe Adrian's going to a conference that the registration's 325 um, and I'm going to one that's 50. Um, this grant could fund us both. Um, Adrian would get the money to cover her registration and I'd get the money to cover mine. Uh, so it's not, not as inflexible as some other uh, granting agencies, which have a really fixed amount. So the more money we get, the more people we can support. Um, it also means if everybody's going to expensive conferences, we're not able to support as many people, uh, which is why we're actively trying to, to fundraise and find new uh, big donors, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally trying to find big donors, but also to like every dollar matters here because we're sending students um, you know, to conferences somewhere online still. Some folks still want to attend or need to attend them virtually. So the cost of those are sometimes reduced. Not so much anymore, fortunately, but um, still a hefty price regardless. But it really does add up. So I think our so far we're at $555 in funding. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got quite a, we're, well, we're like a quarter away there, right? Because our funding goal is $2,000 and that'll, yeah, fund a few students. Uh, but if we could go over that, that's awesome because we can always fund more. Um, in past cycles, I think we've been able to fund a couple at a time, like four or five students at a time. Um, so it's been really good. I think we've said no to very few students, actually, who've applied. So the more money we have, the less the less no emails we have to send out because we don't like sending your rejected emails. That hurts our heart. I hate doing that. Those emails are the worst to write. Yeah, they are. And it's one of those things where it's like, sometimes if we're a little bit short, we dip into our general funds or people on the committee have, have thrown in uh, funding to help specific people that they knew didn't have funding. So we, we just want to encourage people to, to spread the word as well, especially like to their PIs or, uh, other people in their kind of like academic network that might have a couple bucks to pitch in. Uh, I think currently it's largely family funded, yeah. uh, right? Like I think your grandma uh, just put in a hundred dollars and it's really nice that our, we have people that care enough about what we're doing to help support us. Um, but it would be also good if 
it came from other people um, who it maybe more directly impacts because PIs need students to be successful. Uh, otherwise, they are negatively impacted when they go up for their review process, right? Like they don't have the, the students uh, graduating or being successful in the kind of numeric way that academia is currently structured. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Well, it's two minutes to two. Did you want to keep going on a little bit about the grant or should we wrap up? Yeah, I'm not sure. So we were like 30 minutes late getting started. We only have two viewers and I think they are both us. <laughs> <laughs> It's been great talking to you. <laughs> yeah. But I think now we understand how to do this. Yeah. Um, Cause this was the first time we did the collab cam. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what uh, we can do is like uh, archive this part that worked and I can maybe edit the video a little bit. Cool. Um, and then we can archive it on to, to Twitch if I can figure out how to do that and and YouTube and we could share the link out with people um, and on our social media. And then I guess we should also announce that we were going to switch um, our schedule, right? We were going to try to do like every other like Thursday night or something yeah, for an like hour. Yeah. Um, so we'll figure out uh, when the next one will be, but probably in like two, well, two weeks will be, I think I'm busy that Thursday, but we'll, we'll figure it out and update our calendar. Mm -hmm. But I think that do what? Oh, sorry. I think we're going to be at GSA Northeast Southeast GSA. Oh, okay. You'll have to just send me the dates for that. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we'll figure it out. And then I think we'll be probably going through Reddit and identifying fossils. I think that would be a fun, fun thing to do. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, I'm gonna end the stream. Thanks to Judy who chimed in for the technical difficulties. I think it was too much for my little laptop to handle. So oh. that's okay. Yeah, we know now. We know now. Okay, well, we are signing off, but please support the Tilly Edinger Travel Grant if you can, or share our posts about it. Um, thank you, and good day. Goodbye.